Settlers of Catan is a German-style board game where players compete to colonize the island of Catan. The first person to accumulate 10 victory points wins the game. If you're new to German-style board games, then all the rules I'm about to go over might seem a bit overwhelming. But rest assured that once you have gone around the board once or twice and each person has taken a turn or two, you'll quickly get the hang of things and discover why Settlers of Catan has achieved the worldwide popularity that it has. The game board is randomly constructed at the start of each game using a series of hex-shaped land tiles. Each land tile produces a specific resource and any player who borders that tile has a chance to harvest that resource during the course of the game. I'll go into the specifics of the harvest in more detail later. At the start of every game, each player selects a color and receives all the components of that color to control. These components consist of settlements, cities, and roads. Each player will also receive a building costs card that describes the resource cost for building any of the aforementioned items as well as their victory point value. Think of this card as a restaurant menu that lists what you can buy with your money. On a player's turn, the following actions are performed. The dice are rolled and resources are distributed to any player whose settlement or city borders the land with a corresponding number token. Each bordering settlement grants the corresponding player a single resource card of the type produced by the land tile. A bordering city grants two resources. At this point, the player may trade resources with other players, conduct maritime trade, or trade four resources of a single type for any one resource with the bank. Trading is one of the more enjoyable elements of the game because people are free to negotiate deals as they see fit. You may trade one card for another, two for one, three for one. It all depends on how good you are at negotiating and how desperate you are to obtain a resource. In most cases, you won't have access to one or more resources, so trading will be the only way to obtain certain materials. If a city or settlement of yours is connected to a maritime port, you can trade the specified number of identical resources for any one of another type. Once the current player has completed the trading phase of his or her turn, they may then use their resource cards to purchase and build improvements like settlements, cities, and roads, or development cards. A player may purchase as many items as he can afford during his turn, provided he can immediately place them on the board. Settlements must be placed on a connected road owned by a player as long as it is placed a minimum of two road lengths away from any other city or settlement, player owned or otherwise. Cities may only be purchased as upgrades to settlements. So in essence, you need to build a settlement, which will cost you one brick, one wheat, one sheep, and one wood, and then upgrade it with a city, which will cost you an additional two wheat and three ore. Finally, a user may play a single development card provided he or she did not acquire it during the current turn. In fact, a single development card may be played at any time during the player's turn. We will look at development cards in more detail later. The robber starts the game on the desert and comes into play whenever a 7 is rolled. When this occurs, all players must count the resource cards in their hand. Any player that has 8 or more cards must immediately return half to the bank rounding down. So a player with either eight or nine cards must give back four cards to the bank. The affected player may choose which cards to give up. Next, the player who rolled the seven must move the robber to another land tile and may steal one card from one player whose settlement or city is adjacent to the affected land. Once that ugly little bit of business is over with, the player whose turn it is may continue to the trading phase of his turn and play proceeds as normal. There are five ways to earn a point in Settlers of Catan, building settlements, 
building cities, which are really upgraded settlements, building the longest road, building the largest army, collecting victory point cards. The longest road is given to the player who builds a continuous road of six or more road sections. As soon as this is achieved, the player receives the longest road card and is awarded the two victory points that come with it. But be careful, if another player builds a longer road, they take the longest road card and the victory points. The largest army card is awarded to the first player to play three soldiers or knight development cards depending on your version of Settlers of Catan. I'm going to talk more about development cards in a minute. Just know that, like the longest road, the largest army card bestows two victory points to its bearer. And of course, if another player builds a larger army, they take the card from you and the victory points. Development cards can also be purchased with resources you acquire in the game. These development cards grant you specific bonuses. The soldier, or knight card depending on your version of the game, allows you to move the robber to another land tile and optionally steal a resource card from any one player whose cities or settlements border that tile. Once played, a soldier card remains face up in front of the player and represents his or her army. The more soldier cards that are played, the larger that player's army. The Year of Plenty card allows you to obtain any two resource cards from the bank and immediately add them to your hand. These cards can be immediately used to build. The Road Building card allows you to place two free roads on the board. The Monopoly card allows a player to call out a single resource type, say wood or sheep for instance, and all players must hand over all resources of that type that they currently hold in their hand. Paying attention to what resources are currently in abundance is extremely helpful in maximizing the effects of this card. The last card type you will find in the development card stack is the Victory Point card. This card is worth a single victory point toward your total score. Development cards can be played at any time during a player's turn. The rules for development cards are as follows. Only one development card can be played per turn, and the played card must have been purchased during a previous turn. Unless stated otherwise, a development card that has been played is immediately returned to the bottom of the development card stack. The Victory Point card is the only exception in that multiple Victory Point cards can be played at once. Victory Point cards should remain hidden and only revealed at the end of the game to prove the player has accumulated the 10 Victory Points required to win the game. The game ends when a player obtains 10 points. The first person to accomplish this is the winner. Keep in mind, each player should be tracking his own score and make the announcement as soon as 10 points are accumulated.